Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, good to see you all. I know we are very few of you in the class. We'll uh, uh, wait it for a couple more to join, but it's since it's already nine minutes past our time, we'll just uh, begin class and uh, just hope that uh, Kiran and Erin and Thomas and Siddharth will uh, join us. Uh, till then, we'll do a recap, so maybe uh, they can join us in the meantime. Uh, so yesterday, we were basically looking at uh, uh, how to write a lesson plan, the importance of writing a lesson plan. Uh, we looked at, we are looking at the different uh, sections or different components uh, of a lesson plan. Uh, the first thing we said was learning objectives, which we looked at um, uh, last week, last Tuesday. Um, and yesterday, we looked at introduction uh, after a lesson objective is the recap and then is the introduction to your lesson. So we said the importance uh, of, uh, we looked at the importance of having a good introduction uh, because uh, your introduction is where you can catch the attention of the children. Uh, it's the best place to get their attention. It's also the worst place to lose their uh, attention. Um, and we know that if we don't have the children's attention, we cannot teach them anything. Uh, so it's important that uh, your introduction is, uh, you know, catches their attention, uh, is creative, is uh, something that is participatory, that involves the children, uh, excites them, uh, you know, gives them kinds of thoughts about or makes them curious about what you are going to teach them uh, in the uh, lesson. So it should, uh, your attention, uh, your introduction should establish a point of contact with the children. Uh, it should talk about something that they are going through, that the challenges they face or some difficulties or their real life situations, uh, something that they're experiencing so that, uh, <clears throat> sorry, they can connect with you. Uh, something that will, you know, arouse their curiosity and something also that uh, they can identify uh, with you. I think even when uh, you're preaching or you're basically teaching, it's important to have a good introduction uh, so that it can catch the attention of your uh, listeners or those audience that you are preaching um, to, okay? Uh, so begin the introduction well, and we also, uh, I also mentioned that it's very important that we keep the introduction very short and brief because you have a lesson to follow. Uh, so the two main components that you can use in an introduction is an attention getter. Uh, you can show them objects. Uh, you can also do a skit. Uh, you can have a quiz, and I gave you an example of a quiz. I gave you an example of a skit. Uh, you can also use different objects, or you can use an uh, activity, which uh, I explained um, last Tuesday before we ended class, a short activity, uh, which I uh, mentioned to you all. And uh, you could also, you know, start off with a game. And the second thing that you can uh, do for your introduction to make it uh, very creative and interactive uh, and catch the attention of people is, um, uh, you know, is object lessons. So let me just uh, present that on the screen for you. Okay. So what is an object lesson? And, uh, you know, just it's about using any object, okay? Okay, an object lesson is used to illustrate a concept, uh, a truth, uh, some learning in the story that you want to reiterate uh, or you want children to understand. Um, you can combine uh, this object lesson with an object uh, or a trick that will be kind of like a visual aid uh, to help children to remember the lesson. And I mentioned yesterday in class that, uh, you know, uh, when we, uh, even when you're preaching, you can use these object lessons because these are powerful uh, reminders uh, 
two people, uh, you know, uh, sometime in the way in the future, when they look at uh, the object, God can remind them through that object, something that you have preached or taught or used in your Bible study or taught them through your Bible study. And God can use that uh, to for them to remember or uh, uh, to reiterate the lesson and the truth to come back into their uh, lives. And that is why we see that even uh, we mentioned uh, yesterday's class that Jesus used a lot of object lessons. He said, look at the lilies of the field, look at the birds of the air, uh, you know, the sparrows. Uh, you're worth more than the sparrows. And uh, he said, uh, you know, farmer went to sow his seeds. Uh, maybe he was just teaching there and the farmer is sowing and they remember the kind of soils uh, used for farming, the seeds. And he used these different parables, uh, you know, um, uh, to, uh, to uh, bring home the truth or uh, to explain concepts, to explain truths to them. And I'm sure that even after Jesus has gone back to the Father in heaven, you know, when people looked at uh, the mountain, they would remember what Jesus told them about faith, that, you know, if you speak to the mountains to go and fall into the sea, it will obey you. So you have faith as small as a mustard seed. When they looked at the mustard seed, it will remind them of the faith. So, you know, uh, using these various objects can uh, uh, bring home powerful truths and some concepts which are very difficult for people to understand, uh, to comprehend, to uh, kind of believe how can that really happen. Uh, it's good to use objects. Um, you know, whenever I, um, I'm writing a, the curriculum for Children's Church of a Catalyst, our school, uh, APC School Outreach Ministry, and I'm looking for object lessons, I always find this pastor in the U.S. Uh, while he's preaching, he uses uh, very, very good objects uh, uh, to reinforce the truth or to bring home the truth or to reiterate what he has said. So uh, so even when you are preaching or teaching, you can use object lessons. So how do you use object lessons? The first thing, uh, I put it up on your screen, is introduce the object uh, and connect that object to what you are really trying to explain. Uh, then teach the basic truth. And then it's important for you to relate the object to the Bible text. Okay, so I gave some examples of uh, object lessons. Uh, I'll give you some more uh, today. Uh, now, for example, you want to teach uh, children about uh, sin and how sin is detestable in God's sight, how sin separates us from God, um, how sin uh, ruins. Uh, our life destroys our life so you can just tell the children uh, you know children I have some uh, tasty lime juice uh, in this glass and um, you know I'm feeling very very thirsty because I've been talking so you can pour some lime juice and then you can just taste it and say wow it's you know really tasty and it's uh, kind of quenching my thirst um, and then you can ask the children, how many of you would like to drink uh, this uh, lime juice? And I'm sure children who learn by taste, they will put up their hands or maybe all children. So then you can have other paper cups and then you can put little, little uh, lime juice in their cups and then uh, give it to each um, child. Okay. And then you ask them, um, so did you like it? Was it tasty? Uh, do you think it's good? It's perfect, right? The sugar, the salt, the tangy lemon taste, and they will say, yes, it's very tasty. So then, you know, you say, okay, I have an idea. Uh, I just want to put something more into this lime juice. And then you take little sand, which you have, and mud or sand or rock or uh, stones, whatever, and put them in that lime juice and say, now, who would like to drink this lime juice, which has sand? or if you put the rock or stones, and you can say, who would like to drink this lime juice with the sand or rock or stones? And I'm sure none of the children would want to. Then said, now why don't you want to drink this lime juice with, uh, with sand? Um, they'll say, because it's not good, it's not healthy, we can fall sick. Uh, yeah, this is no longer good compared to this lime juice, which is good, which is tasty, which is healthy, this is no longer tasty or good or healthy. And then you can say, you know, children, uh, our lives uh, were like this, like this lime juice. Okay, when God created us, he created us perfect, he created us good. Uh, but you know, when Adam and Eve sinned, and so you can say the sand here resembles uh, sin. Okay, so when 
when sin entered our lives, we were no longer perfect. We were no longer good. Uh, we we were no longer, uh, you know, uh, right in God's sight. Uh, you know, nothing in us was good. And that is why, you know, everything in us became really bad. That's why we even fall sick. Uh, we, or we have, uh, we feel sad, we feel disappointed. Uh, or we feel discouraged, there's hopelessness, there's pain, there's suffering, everything that was not perfect. God created everything perfect, like this lime juice, which was perfect, tasty, and good. God created everything perfect. But when man sinned, everything became imperfect like this. Okay, just like you don't want to, uh, you know, drink this, even God could not relate to us because we were imperfect, because we are not good, because we are sinners. And this is what a little sand, children, you know, I don't have to put this whole cup of sand into this, or I don't need to take all the sand of the world and put it into this lime juice. Just a little sand, just one stone, just two stones can make this whole lime juice in this cup uh, worthless and that is how we are just a little sin just a little disobedience or a small lie or using bad words or uh, you know not listening to our parents uh, you know can make our lives like this lime juice totally hopeless worthless and good for nothing okay so this is a good object lesson that you can teach children about uh, sin um, we can also teach them how God made everything perfect and how, you know, the sand here resembles something who was imperfect in this world. And that is the devil. The devil always wants to make us bad, imperfect, just like him. And so when we obey him, uh, you know, some of his nature comes into us. So you can pour a little sand and, you know, we become just like Satan, imperfect, bad and evil. And nothing in us is good. So, you know, see, uh, this, through the this small object lesson, uh, you know, we were able to teach uh, some powerful truths. So what I did was basically introduce the object. Then I uh, brought out the basic truth and now I'll have to connect it with my lesson. So today, what did we learn about? We learned today that, you know, how Adam and Eve sinned and how because of their sin, you know, everything that God created perfect, you know, became imperfect. And then you can continue uh, with your lesson uh, and, you know, you can bring about the learning. Okay. Uh, another object lesson that we could use is now I'm teaching children about uh, healing and deliverance uh, or just God is our healer. Uh, and then you can tell the children, um, uh, you know, children did uh, when when we do something naughty or when we are bad or we do really, really bad things. Uh, you know, does God punish us by giving us sickness, uh, pain, suffering? Um, does he do that? Uh, you know, and so the children might say, uh, yes, you know, God punishes us. Uh, so you want to tell them that God is not the author of sickness. He's not the author of uh, pain or disease. Uh, so how do you explain it to uh, children? Okay, so you can just uh, go to a child who's sitting in the class and you say, give me five, uh, give me uh, 1000 rupees. Okay, so the child will look at you and say, you just tell the child, yeah, I'm asking you for 1,000 rupees. Give it to me. Uh, so the child will say, I don't have 1,000 rupees, auntie, or I don't have 1,000 rupees, uncle. Um, and then you can go to another child and say, you know, make sure that the, these children don't have these things with them or even at home. Uh, give me your guitar. So the child says, I don't have a guitar. I don't even have one at home. I don't know how to play a guitar. Uh, so you can go to another child and make sure the child does not have this uh, with them or possesses one. You know, give me your mobile. So the child says, auntie or uncle, I don't have a mobile. And so uh, say, okay, uh, so why were these three children class? Why were these children not able to give me a thousand rupees or a guitar or a mobile? Uh, so the children will say, because they don't have one. Okay, it says, yeah, that's right. Because they don't have, they cannot give me. Okay. Uh, the same way God cannot give us what he does not have. Now in heaven, is there sickness? Is there disease? Uh, is there cancer? Is there uh, corona? Is there, uh, you know, uh, any kind of uh, pain and suffering? And they'll think and uh, some of them will say no. Um, in heaven, is there any demonic oppression? Like can Satan come and oppress us in heaven? No. 
So when God does not have sickness and disease and pain and suffering, then how can he give it to us? Just like you don't have a thousand rupees or a guitar or mobile to give it to me, the same way God cannot give us what he does not have. So God is not somebody who is the author of sickness or disease or pain or suffering then how do we all fall sick why do we all fall sick why do we get uh, uh, various diseases why do we even have a stomach ache and headache then you can get into the lesson and you can explain it to them so now they're in they're wondering yeah when god does not have it i thought all this time god is the one who punishes us by giving us sickness and disease now he does not have it so how do we fall sick why do we fall sick so you know you're catching their attention you're getting their curiosity and you know they are um, they're wanting to hear the um, answer so don't give them all the answers uh, you can take them through the lesson and say now i've asked you a lot of questions i'm going to answer you so you listen carefully we'll know where we get sickness from why do we fall sick where do we get all these uh, diseases from and why diseases are in this uh, world when god created everything perfect and he did not put in any sickness and disease on this earth okay so that is another object lesson now um, you're teaching the children about various reasons uh, you know why people fall sick it's because of sin it's because of consequences of their sin and also it is when we sin that god removes his protection for us from us and uh, the you know the devil is there to attack us at that moment so you can use an object lesson uh, to show them this then you can ask them, okay, what is this, everybody? Can you all see it, class? Can you tell me what is it? You can type your answers in the chat section. Yeah, it's an egg, okay? So you can say, what will happen if I throw this egg down or hit it on the, throw it on the wall? What will happen? Any answers? It'll break, yes. It'll kind of uh, dirty the place. This place will get dirty and smelly. Okay. So you can say our lives are very delicate like this egg, right? Uh, if I just hit it or throw it down or it just slips off of my hand, this egg can break and will create such a mess. So our lives are very, very delicate like this egg. Okay. And you say, you know, uh, there's someone always who wants to uh, destroy our lives and you know the spoon resembles the person who wants to destroy our life who is that person who wants to destroy our lives the children will say it's a devil satan yes devil satan it's not your friends it's not your teachers who are very strict with you it's a devil who wants to really destroy your life he's waiting to just give you one knock and you know your life can be destroyed you can be broken okay so the devil is always there in the Bible. You can say what the Bible talks about the devil, what it calls the devil. Now you say, you know, the devil can't do anything if we are children of God. When we believe Jesus as our Lord and Savior, you know, God is like this vessel. You know, if I keep this, if I keep this egg under this vessel, okay, it's like God is our protector. He protects us. He guards us from all harm and danger. He guards, and you can say the verses in the Bible that talks about God's protection, that no harm will befall our tent. God protects us. He never even lets our foot to be, to dash against a stone. So this vessel is like, you know, is God's protection. Now you can ask the children, if I take the spoon and hit it on this vessel, will my egg break? What do you think? Yes, no. If I take this spoon and hit it on this vessel, will the egg underneath break? You can type your answers in the chat section. I'm asking you, the class. No. No, it won't break. Exactly. So I keep on hitting it. You know, keep on hitting it everywhere. Okay. But the egg does not break, right? It's uh, then you can remove it and show them that the egg is not broken. So say same way, similarly, you know, God is our protector. He protects us. He guards us. So even if Satan wants to come and attack us, you know, he cannot do any harm. He cannot bring about any danger. 
he cannot do anything with our lives because we have believed in Jesus, we've accepted Jesus, and Jesus is our protector. He protects us and guards us. But and if, there can be no sickness, no disease that come, come near us. Satan cannot put sickness and disease in our lives. But just imagine if you you know, uh, keep doing sins, you don't obey, you do, you, you watch dirty things, you say bad words, uh, and you know, you do really filthy things, then slowly, you know, God is going to, God is going to keep on telling you, but your, your teachers will remind you, your parents will correct you, but you don't want to heed correction, you don't want to listen, then God will remove the protection. Okay, it's not because he wants to harm your life or he wants to teach you a lesson or say, okay, now I've removed the protection and Satan will come and he will destroy your life and then you will know, you will learn a lesson, uh, you learn it the hard way. No, it's not that because God removes his protection so that, you know, we realize our mistake because people have been telling us, God has been correcting us, the Holy Spirit has been telling us, parents, teachers, but we don't want to listen. We don't want to stop stealing or we don't want to stop cheating in class or we don't want to use stop using bad words or back answering our parents. Then God removes the protection. You know, when God removes the protection, that's when Satan is ready to put sickness or disease or pain or suffering into our lives. And God is not there to protect us. But the minute we go through all those pain and suffering, but Satan puts it in our lives, you know, and uh, we go through pain, suffering, we are broken, disappointed. That's when we realize we cry out to God. We say, God, please forgive me. The minute we do that, we have a loving, gracious, compassionate and forgiving God who again protects us, who restores us, who helps us and who guides us. So a very simple way of just explaining to them, uh, even you can use this object lesson even for temptation, how Satan tempts us and how God, uh, you know, has promised that he will help us overcome uh, temptation, okay? Uh, as some other object lessons that you can use are, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, children are always comparing themselves with others. They, they, uh, they think, uh, you know, God, uh, if they're not good in studies, if they're not talented, if they feel that they're not uh, good looking, then they feel, you know, um, uh, God does not love them or the, God does not like them. Uh, so you can use gems, you know, gems, right? The chocolate, the sweet gems uh, that we eat it has different colors so you can uh, blindfold a child and you can tell them that I'm going to put something in your mouth I'm going to put three things in your mouth and then uh, you can tell tell me whether the taste is different so you can show the class but you tell the class that each time I show you the thing that I'm going to put in this person's mouth you're not going to um, you know, uh, uh, talk anything. You just have to keep quiet. Okay. So you take out a uh, pink gems and you show it to the children uh, and uh, put it in the child's mouth. Ask the child to open it and put it in the child's mouth and ask the child to eat. Then you show them uh, the class a yellow color gem, uh, you know, which can resemble uh, uh, this pink one, strawberry. Uh, the yellow can resemble vanilla and you can put that in the child's mouth and get them to eat it. And you can ask them, the, was the first one different from the second uh, thing that I put in your mouth? The child can say no. Some children will say yes. The third thing then you can use is, um, uh, 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 sorry, the yellow is banana flavor. And the third one you can use is uh, green gems, which uh, which will, you know, kind of resemble um, uh, a vanilla flavor. Okay, so you can put it in, or mint, you can just put it in their mouth and say, okay, now it's the third thing different from what I gave you the first time, the second time. Some children will say yes, some children will say no. And then uh, you can, you know, remove the blindfold from the child's eyes and you can show them uh, show the child what you've given them, that it is gems. And so you can tell the children that, you know, uh, in gems, the inside content, is it the same or is different for uh, different colors? Uh, are there different flavors or is just one flavor? 
they'll say, no, it's one flavor. It's not because it's pink, it's not strawberry flavor or it's yellow, it's not banana flavor or because it's uh, uh, gray, it's not grape flavor, but everything has the same chocolate flavor uh, inside. And so you can say, yes, that's exactly how God has made us. He's made each one of us to look very, very different. Some of us have straight hair, some of us have curly hair, some of us are short, some of us are tall, uh, some of us are, uh, you know, uh, uh, fair skin, some of us have brown skin, dark skin yellow skin uh, you know so we are all uh, God has made us all different just imagine children if the gems had all the same color uh, would it have been attractive or exciting for us to eat it no why does it make it more exciting for us to eat it it's because of the different colors and then you can tell them just like each gem has the same content chocolate flavor same amount uh, 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 the same uh, quantity, the same flavor, the same taste, everything is the same. The same way God has given each one of us, you know, different talents, but he's made us all equal in his sight. He's not given some of them, uh, you know, uh, uh, great talents, some of us less talents. He's not made some of us uh, good looking, some of us ugly looking. Nobody's ugly because he's created us all perfect. So just a simple gem scan reiterate this truth to the children. Um, another thing that we could use is an apple. Uh, you know, uh, when we take an apple, usually we cut the apple this way, right? Right down. But if you slice it, so you tell the children, uh, how do you take this apple and cut it with a knife? You, they say, we cut it down like this. What do you find in the center? They will say seeds. Now, if I take this apple and I dice it down the center, cut it into two equal halves, okay? If you open it, what do we see? Has any of you cut an apple or diced it in the center, right down through? Anyone? Yes, no? Yes. So, okay, see that. What do you see in the middle when you open it out? Seeds, yes. What else? Actually, if you cut it, dice it down in the center, you will find a star shaped on each side. In the center, there'll be a star shape and there will be seeds inside that star shape. So, when you cut it out for the children and you'll say, uh, did you ever see the star shaped inside this uh, apple? And they'll be uh, shocked. They'll say, no, we've never seen it. Why? Because you've always cut the apple this way, right? So you can say, just like we didn't know that there is a star inside this, uh, you know, uh, this apple, uh, you know, God has placed a star in each one of us. Now, what do we mean by star? Star is not that he's put us, you know, a star from the sky, he's put it inside us. No, he's place in each one of us a unique special talent each one of us have a unique special talent god has given us now some of us don't know the talents because we're always looking at other people's talents or we're thinking that we're useless and hopeless and good for nothing and so we're not able to see the talent but god has placed a unique talent in each one of you so you can ask god what is a talent or you he will show it to you and you can make use of that unique talent and you can be good or great like anyone else around you okay uh, last object lesson um, uh, I can show you or two more I'll, I'll do is um, you know when you're teaching children that uh, you know if you continue sinning in uh, in one area of your life if you continually say uh, say you're going to keep on uh, cheating in class or you're continually going to keep on uh, stealing in class then that is going to become uh, you know, a stronghold that uh, that uh, uh, sin is not going to leave you. It's difficult to break free from that. So you can have a child come up in front, some children who like to learn by uh, interpersonal relationships or uh, just moving around, just walking around, children who learn by seeing, can bring them up and then you can ask them to, you know, put their hands like this and uh, you can ask them to, you know, just tie their hands around with a thread. Once you tie it around the thread and you ask them to break free, you know, once they do this, the thread will automatically come out. But if you, you know, you keep on again, you know, tying that thread around their uh, wrist, uh, you know, make it strong and then ask them to break free, they will find it very, very difficult to break free. So you can teach children that, you know, um, 
this is one way that you know we know that uh, you know the moment you sin or you cheat or you copy or you you tell a lie you ask god for forgiveness you don't do it again you're able to break free but if you're not uh, you know, you continue keeping on doing the same sins, that same sin is going to become like a bondage, a stronghold, and you will not be able to break free from that, okay? Then you, uh, last object lesson I would like to show you, there are many more you can use, is a whistle. Okay, I'm going to blow this whistle, uh -huh. so let me just reduce this volume so it's not too loud for all of you. Okay. So you, you're talking about conscience and you're saying that, you know, the Holy Spirit is there inside you. He, uh, you know, he tells you when you're doing wrong. So you can say the Holy Spirit is like this whistle. He's not the whistle, like this whistle. So, you know, you can just blow. So you can say, you know, every time you do something wrong, it's like, you know, the Holy Spirit will tell you that it is wrong. But if you don't listen to the Holy Spirit, second time you do the same thing, the Holy Spirit will remind you again. But this time the voice will be a little softer. The third time you don't listen and you still keep doing it, you know, the voice will become much more softer. The, the fifth time, sixth time. And then you will not be able to hear the Holy Spirit speaking to you because your sin has overtaken you. You know, your sin has kind of um, made you, your conscience dead uh, to that part of you. And so you continue sinning in that, even though you know it's wrong, you cannot give up that habit. It's That's why people who smoke or drink or those terrorists who keep on killing people, do it because they have not been listening to their conscience. So you tell the children how important it is to listen to their conscience. Every time their conscience tells them they have done something wrong, to ask God for forgiveness or when the Holy Spirit speaks to them, ask God for forgiveness and don't do it because if they do it, then it will become like a stronghold and you can use that uh, thread uh, uh, object lesson uh, to bring home the truth okay so this is um what you could use uh, object lessons for okay uh, you can use this even when you're preaching you're teaching and you you doing a bible study but object lessons are very effective for children and anytime in the future when they look at these objects they will be reminded of this truth that you have taught them okay so we finish the main introduction part introduction you can use attention getters or object lesson then you go on to the main teaching content. And I said for the main teaching content, it's important that you write down, uh, you know, uh, uh, not only for teaching content, you write down your entire lesson, what you're going to do. So when you're writing down the lesson, you will, you know, come across things, some big words. Uh, uh, you can simplify that. Uh, you know, it's important to keep the language simple for children. Uh, all of us who teach children are adults. And, uh, you know, we tend to sometimes, uh, when we're teaching children, we tend to speak to them like we are speaking to another adult or we tend to teach them like we are teaching another adult. But we need to understand that they are children. So when you're writing the lesson plan, um, you know, you will come across uh, some difficult words and you make sure that you replace it with simple words because if you use unfamiliar or big words to children which they, they may they may not understand, they will not be able to catch what you are teaching or explaining them. So keep the language simple. For example, if you're talking about the prodigal son, you can say, you know, prodigal son, they will not understand what is the meaning of prodigal in the first place. Then you will talk about, you know, the the uh, he took his inheritance. He asked his father for his inheritance. They will be wondering what is inheritance. Uh, he took his share of the property. Some children will not understand what is share of property. Um, and then he went and spent it all in loose living. Now, they won't know, understand what is loose living. They only know their clothes are loose or the shoe is loose, you know, whatever. So you need to, ex when you're writing down all of these words, you need to come uh, make it simple or you can think about okay how can I replace these difficult words with simple uh, uh, ways that they can understand what is a better word how can I explain it to them that is why it's important for you to write down the 
lesson plan. So keep the language simple. Uh, for example, you know, you're talking about uh, Joseph's story, which is a very uh, uh, story, which is a narrative, which, uh, you know, everyone tells children. Uh, so you say Pharaoh, they'll be wondrous. And uh, they will not understand who Pharaoh is. Uh, famine, they might not understand what famine is, straw, plague. So it's important that you when you're writing, you'll come across all these words, try to find similar words or simple uh, ways you can teach them or help them to understand these uh, words. Even when you're talking about uh, creation, which is a very familiar narrative, which we tell children, uh, you can tell children that, you know, uh, the serpent or the snake came and spoke to Eve. They'll, they'll wonder, the snake never speaks. You know, how can the snake speak? So how are you going to explain to the children? Who is this snake? Who is the serpent? Why did the snake come in? Why did the devil come in the form of a snake to speak to Eve? So all of these things are very important. Uh, and you will know these things that need to be explained only when you write them. So the importance of writing the lesson plan. The other thing that we as adults uh, use when we are teaching children uh, is, especially when we're teaching the main teaching content, is, you know, uh, we use Christian jargons. Now, Christian jargons like, um, you know, uh, we are made righteous in God's sight, we are redeemed, we are sanctified, uh, we are sinners, uh, we are saved by grace through faith, uh, the blood of Jesus cleanses us, uh, you know, uh, God's covenant with us, the Lord's Supper, communion. Now, they will not understand all of these phrases, sanctified, redeemed, justified. I'm sure some of us also will not be able to explain it as, uh, you know, ourselves as adults. So it's important that when you write a lesson plan, you know, you if you stick to that lesson plan, you speak what is in that, you will not use all of these Christian jargons. But if you want to use it, you will think about how I'm going to explain to them what is redemption, what is justification, what is righteousness, what is sanctification, how the blood of Jesus cleanses us. Or children only know when blood comes out, it's like, oh, it's devastating, it's painful, it's like a cut or it's scary, you know, so how the blood of Jesus cleanses us. They only know water cleanses them, but not the blood of Jesus. So how are you going to explain all of these things? It's important for you to uh, write it down. So when you write it down, you know, you know, you spot all these words, then you know how to explain it. You can think how to explain it. Write down the explanation as well so that you don't uh, transgress into other areas. Keep it simple, short, and uh, sweet, okay? then uh, replace those words with simpler uh, words which children can remember. Also, when you are trying to explain these uh, Christian jargons uh, or, uh, you know, you're trying to explain the main truth of the lesson, it's important that you write it down so that you know the age group that you're teaching. You cannot explain righteousness the same way you explain to a child in grade two. Uh, and a child who's in grade 8 or in a child in grade 10. So writing it down will help you simplify it. Okay, These children will understand this. They're grade 4, they're grade 5. They're able to understand this. So you will keep it very short and sweet, and you'll know how to explain it uh, with regard to the age group. Okay. The third thing when you're writing the main teaching content is uh, the goal of a children's church minister. Uh, I call all of our teachers in children's church as not teachers, but I call them children's church ministers because it just reminds them of their importance, their position, uh, that they are ministering to the Lord. And so it's so important what they are doing. And it's important that they come well prepared, uh, uh, pray, uh, pray, uh, come, uh, uh, you know, even as they are spending their time uh, learning from God, um, walking in God's ways so that they can minister effectively. So uh, the goal of a children's church minister or a Sunday school teacher is not just to narrate a Bible narrative uh, or a Bible incident to the children, uh, but it is to teach them deeper truths or deeper theology. Okay, so get into deeper things. For example, if you're teaching them creation, you can say, uh, you know, how many days God created the world, children? He created it in six days, seventh day, he rested. Uh, the first day, you know what he created? He said, let there be light, and there was light. Isn't that wonderful, children? You know what he created on the second day, and then you can go on for each day. But then you can 
get them into a little more deeper theology and say, you know, how did God create all of this? How did the light come to being? When he said, you know, let there be light, how did the light come into existence? You know, um, the children can say, he said. Yes, so he used his words. And then you can talk about the importance of God's word or how powerful God's word is. And you can say when God speaks uh, or he declares something, declares means when he says he wants something to happen, it will come about, it will happen just the way it is, it will come into existence. That means it will come into being. So everything we see in creation was created just by God's word. He spoke it and it came into being. And then you're talking about Adam and Eve, how they were created. Uh, so you can say, you know, God created Adam and Eve in his image and likeness, children. Is it that wonderful? Um, so they will think images, you know, exactly how they look in the mirror. Uh, you know, so uh, they'll think that, okay, we are like God. But then you can explain to them, you know, what do we mean by God creating us in his image and likeness? Now, God is spirit. He does not have a human body like us. So what do... How do we understand this word God created us in his image and likeness? That means God is holy. He created Adam and Eve holy. God is without sin. He has not committed any sin. He does not do any sin. He created Adam and Eve to be without sin or he created them without any sin. God does not die. He created Adam and Eve never to die. You know, God has a mind. He plans things. He gave us a mind so that we can understand him. We can know what he is telling us uh, and asking us to do. You know, God has a will. He does what he plans. He purposes. He wills. He also gave us a will. That's why we choose. You know, sometimes we choose good things. Sometimes we choose bad things like Adam and Eve. They chose the wrong thing and they were like God, but now they became like Satan. Everything bad entered into this world. And then you can talk about all of those things. So uh, you see, when we when we are trying to explain these things, we can, uh, you know, when you're writing it down, we can think about how to simply explain and bring about more deeper theological truths into the lesson. For example, you're talking about blind man Bartimaeus. And uh, you finish telling the story and you said, Jesus said, your faith has healed you. And immediately Bartimaeus was able to see. So you can ask them, what is faith? You know, faith is you don't see, but yet you believe. So why did Jesus uh, appreciate or, uh, uh, you know, pat uh, Bartimaeus uh, for his faith? Because Bartimaeus was blind. He could not see. He's never seen Jesus do even one miracle. But even though nobody was willing to help him to get to Jesus, even though he could not get himself to Jesus, even though he's never seen any miracles Jesus has done, but he had the faith. Okay, faith is that when we don't see, but yet we believe. So his faith, you know, got him uh, to cry out to Jesus. And uh, Jesus says, your faith has healed you. So very simple way you can bring about what is faith. Uh, that faith is important for us to receive healing. God uh, likes us to have faith in him, uh, trust in him, and believe in him. Okay? So uh, these are small theological truths that uh, you can uh, bring about uh, and explain uh, to the uh, students. Okay? Um, I'll just end this class with uh, another example uh, with David. You know, when David went to fight against uh, Goliath, uh, he tells him uh, in, uh, it's given to us in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 45. He says, you come against me with spear and sword and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, you have to fight. So you can say, children, imagine David is a small boy. He's going to fight this Goliath who has this huge sword, who's a good warrior, who has a spear. You can just put the spear and it can kill uh, David. He has, uh, you know, a javelin that he can throw at him and he can kill David. But David says, I've not come with any weapon to fight the battle, but I've come in the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. 
So you see, children, God's name, Jesus' name is so powerful. When we speak the name of Jesus, the Bible says that even the devils get scared and it runs away, it flees away. You know, when you speak the name of Jesus, uh, you know, it can bring us healing. When you speak the name of Jesus, it can give us peace of mind. It can bring back whatever we have studied. Remember what we have studied. The name of Jesus can help us to overcome our weakness of cheating or copying or using bad words or fighting with others. So you're just teaching them the importance of the name of Jesus. So it's important that when we narrate stories to get into a little theological truth based on, on the age group uh, and explain it to them uh, so that they will be able to um, better understand and apply what they have learned and know God in a more stronger, in a more intimate way. Okay. Uh, so I'll end class here. Uh, thank you all for joining class. Uh, uh, the next class, that is next Monday, is the last class for uh, children's ministry. And uh, from March 1st onwards, March and April, you will have Pastor Roshan Johannes uh, take uh, youth ministry for you all. So the next class is uh, my last class for you all. Okay, and I'll discuss with you all next class when I'm going to give you the um, uh, two assessments that I have planned for uh, this year. I'll do one in uh, maybe in the mid March and another one in the beginning of April. Okay, okay, thank you all for joining class. Have a blessed day and a blessed week ahead. Uh, God bless everyone. Thank you. Thank you.